Today we're gonna take this standard Nerf gun zombie killer and take it to the next level by painting it up. But if you really wanna take it to a whole nother level, we'll take it to the battle worn stage. Interested? Here we go. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. A Nerf gun, aging, rebuild, kind of what I did to this toy here, the Han Solo Blaster. I'll post below a link to this project. Even though it doesn't have a trigger, it's got this shotgun kind of thing, and we'll show you how that works. First thing we're gonna do is get it out of the box. I have my able body assistant here. Magic hands number one. No, you're magic hands number three, actually. Because yeah. you're the third in the series. So let's take this out. Okay, so these are the two key pieces, and Sir. we're going to get this out here. Hold on. I am going... The battle has been won. So let's get this out of here. What are you going to need? All right, I used standard black with some graphite to get the gunmetal finish on this one. I used a marker for some of the details, and then I used this spray, metallic finish. I'm going to change it up a little bit on this project we're going to use this hammer finish because it kind of looks like the gun. We're going to use the touch-up for this here with the marker that seems to work well. And then we may use this metallic finish or I got this at a great deal. This is the silver hammered version of this. Try that out on the chain here. We're going to age this area here and we might put in some details similar to this depending on how crazy we want to get. There's things that we're gonna to have to tape up. Like for example, this barrel. We wanna be able to have it functional. Put something in there. We obviously put something in here. Do you want that window to show? Mm. We could always paint over it later. But as soon as we paint over it, we're committed. Let's turn it over. Interesting, look at that. Now we have a bunch of screws in here, so maybe we could take out the barrel and paint that separately. Mm. Ooh, that's an eject, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna put it in. Fire it this way first. Around the camera. Good. Now let's turn it over and see what happens to this thing. Or is that a D clogger? I if you get jammed. Made it. A lot of fun this thing. Very loud. Of course. We've decided to take this apart. That will be helpful when spray painting it and getting the detailing in there. There is way too many screws here. And if one screw is tough on you, like a couple of these have been, then that makes it really hard to take it apart, period. I've unscrewed this panel, I've had to unscrew this panel. We're gonna open it up. You don't wanna paint the mechanism because then the gun won't work. Let's see if we can get this off now. I guess we have to start with the handle. That works. And one of the reasons why we're videotaping this is so we can put it back together. We got a stubborn screw here. Hit this screw. Got all the screws done. I think this piece is, might be glued in there as a final finish, which is kind of going to mess us up a little bit. But I was able to pull this out, which is good because then we can paint that separately with silver paint. Let's see what the mechanism looks like on the inside. Oh, it's all self-contained. Good. You can actually take the mechanism out. By just lowering this down, we were able to get the other side of the handle off. Ooh, got to be careful on that one. I think what they do is as the last piece of construction, they glue that in place. I might be able to take a heat gun and release that. They were actually in there with a clip. That kind of kept it in place. The heat gun released it, kind of deformed the plastic a little bit. I don't care about that because when we paint it, we'll certainly be able to fix that. But I didn't see these little clips here. So if you get this similar gun, you got a stubborn piece of plastic, there's probably some sort of clip in here because it just pushes in there and it's a pressure fit. Well, let's look at the gun now. We're gonna take these white pieces off because we can weather them separately. He's convinced that this black handle that's keeping everything in there Finding the right screwdriver is important. You want something narrow that's gonna be able to get in there without stripping the screws. So here you go. Oh, darn you were right. So here's the mechanism. We gotta take a video of this so we can put it back together the way it is. It's screwed in here. Oh, we'll just spray paint it. That's kind of chintzy though. Just like this piece here. It looks nice on one side and looks plasticky. Nerf, can't you just do that little extra detail? You know, you might actually fill that in. Just some putty or something to make it look more realistic before we paint it, which is yet another step. Let me guess, this handle comes apart here. Same way it yeah. does. Well, you actually, you were right, and we'll just say you were right. This, we don't want to take apart. We'll take this off. 
Take this piece off. This is where the video helps. Oh, look at that. Just nicely placed in there. This is like a Lego mechanism, isn't it? Yeah. Right, we got two stops in here. Here's a mechanism we want to be very careful with. We could just tape over that. It's in the inside. We wouldn't have to take it off. And then that way we've preserved the mechanism. The button will be covered. The button we're going to probably paint. Anything that's orange is probably going to turn out to be silver. A lot of people will rough this up before they paint it. I kind of like the fact that we took it apart. It's amazing how they don't use any glue. Go get another sandwich bag. I'm going to put the, all the mechanisms in a bag so we don't lose them. We don't need to take this mechanism apart. It does have a spring because if we deform it on Fine. the bottom here it with heat gun, kind of like what we did here a little bit, that amount deforming and you won't be able to put it in the gun anymore. I think we're going to be able to tape this off, tape that window, tape this window, tape this up. It's all silver. We'll put some wear and tear on it. This is going to be the hammer finish, and this is going to be this hammer finish after we fill it in with some putty. You can mask off with any kind of tape. I prefer this blue. You can see where I've taped this piece here, and I'm actually going to tape this channel. After I've painted it, if for some reason I feel like I need to paint the orange over, I'm going to just use a Sharpie marker. But because I've deconstructed the gun, the taping is really a minimal. This is a decision every builder must make. I had filed down this Reva Reaper. I was starting to, to use just some crack shot call because I knew it was going to take a lot. And I thought, hey, I'll just fill in all these kind of not so good obvious cracks. And then I realized, boy, that's a lot of work and it's going to slow me down. So on this side, I did fill this crack in because I wasn't real happy. And that's more towards the top and more obvious. It's supposed to look like that. And I'm using these little tools I use to make my wands and to work on other builds. You can get these at Home Depot for about five dollars so they're well worth it I'm letting this harden up a little bit you don't want to subtract away by trying to make it better but there's so much detail in this plastic mold that you have to decide what you're going to do i'm going to tape this up because i don't want to take that mechanism off and we'll sand down all these cautions too much legalese and then we're ready for painting after painting up all the various pieces i really like this hammered finish to give you some sort of gun look here's the silver where i used this metallic finish. Really like how that turned out. For the chain and other pieces, this one and the barrel, I used a combination of the silver I just showed you and this hammered finish. This looks almost like a galvanized chain look is what I was looking for there. This no longer made any sense to make this red. I'm going to instead paint it with a black flat just to give it a little bit of an offset from the rest of the black paint here. Starting to get more and more into the detail. You can see right here, there's a little bit of a different grip. And since it's all black, I'm gonna paint that with some burnt sienna dollar paint. I'm gonna start out with a couple of squirts of this. I use egg containers for paint. It's not gonna take much. And a little bit of homemade Windex, which is vinegar and water. Thin it out. And I'm just using a real cheap paintbrush. You could tape it off if you want. You don't care about this because that's going to be covered with the white portion right up to the line. Just give it a little extra texture. It's totally up to you whether you want to weather all of it or leave it clean like you just picked it up from the store. I like weathering things. Even thinned out, it seems a little thick. When I first put it on, and you're going to lose the detail, the little hash marks. As it dries, it's going to thin down and it'll be fine. Maybe you have to do a couple coats. Not sure how this is going to turn out, but this is standard black acrylic paint. I've used that before. Just pour a little bit in there, thin it out. Just a spritz of that. And here you just kind of wipe it on real thick and then wipe it off with a paper towel. The grunge in there, see? Careful not to use the same paper towel that you just used for here. That could be a mistake. You use a combination of a dry paper towel and wet paper towel and you just kind of staining the plastic and let it sit on there for too long with paper towel rub it into all the grooves totally up to you how much you want to put on here i'm liking how that's turning out there you go just add a little bit of paint just grunge it up you're gonna wipe most of this off for a couple runs you'll you'll get it about where you want it kind of liking that so that's the button to release the gun so here you can see pristine and i'm gonna dirty this up next Runge it all up. Now in this case, there's so much deep crevices, you want a lot of good dirt so that the barbed wire pops. Yeah, look at that. A little more contrast. I'm gonna have to go in there maybe with a brush or something and clean it out just a bit so it's not so grungy. But now that you're adding some depth with this paint, coming out a little bit better. 
I use cheap brushes for this kind of stuff because you're gonna beat the heck out of the brushes, just jam the paint in there. Let it sit for a bit and then just wipe it off. Okay. And repeat for your whole project as much as you want. Yeah, see, I gotta go in there with the paper towel and kind of clean it out just a little bit. I'll finish this up and show you the end results. Here's this piece pretty much done compared to clean side. I pulled the tape off. I blocked this off because I didn't want the spring to get messed up in the inside mechanism so that it would still work. I'm just taking a Sharpie silver metallic permanent marker and touching that up. Now the wood grip has dried and so I'm going to do some weathering and that brings out you can see this is kind of flat here. It's hard to see. Here you can kind of see the grooves. It just really highlights them. Finished doing this to the pistol grip and that will be done. Everything's dried overnight. I greased up this here a little bit. You can see where I had the tape to maximize the opportunity for this to slide well. Just use the silver marker to color that in because it's low friction. The other thing I did is I took a black marker and darkened in this piece because it was visible. I guess I could paint that in. Weathered this piece. That's the inside of the rifle. So this piece is done. You can see the orange on the inside. I'm not too worried about that because it's buried deep in there. If you notice, I'm weathering the side that has all the screws on it. The hero side is the other side. It's a little cleaner for whatever reason. So when I show it to you in the intro, that's the difference. This is the weathered side and this is what I'm referring to as the clean side. You can see I didn't get the spray complete on here so I'm gonna touch it up with metallic sharpie silver and you won't be able to tell. And here is the flat black, used to be the red piece. I thought if I can weather with black, so I'm gonna try weathering with silver on this piece here, see how it turns out. I've had this rubbing buff for a long time and never used it. By the way, I like to hang things on the wall because it gives me more space. So I just cut that piece off with a pair of scissors and that allows me to slide this back out and then when I'm done with it, I slide it right back in and I know right where it is on the wall. So let's try rubbing buff on this. Brand new, push it down like that, turn it. Let's see how this goes. Squeeze small amount onto fingertips, soft cloths, or dry short bristle. I'm gonna use my finger. There we go. Oh, probably too much. So let's rub and buff. Let's see how it goes. Oh, it's pretty thick. Kind of liking this stuff. Yeah, look at that. Really kind of giving a depth. It goes on real fast. Taking down the black, rub and buff. Wow, I'm sold. Just don't buff too much or you go right down to the plastic that you painted over in the first place. Rub and buff is pretty darn amazing. Kind of go in here a little bit. Doesn't take much at all. They are not kidding. You can barely see it, but it's maybe just the slightest amount. See, that's, that's almost too much. Oh yeah, look at that. Wow. Yeah, look at that, wow. Okay. I'm going to be using this a lot more. It's hard to put the marker in there in some places, but just the slightest amount. Yeah, look at that. And then it brings the detail right out. Let me show you how much you need, right? Like that much. And then you come in here like this and boom. Here's the piece with completed rub and buff. This stuff is magical. I thought it was going to be a little too wet, but it just goes on there. And then I think it's the Carnuba wax. It just sticks and stays and it gives you just an absolutely incredible realistic sheen. So taking this hammered finish and then rub and buffing it, wow, that's something. So a combination of the markers and rub and buff really seems to work because the markers have a different level of detail. And then when you grunge things up, that is a different level of detail. So you're really getting all sorts of layers on your prop here so that it looks more real. Now let's put it all together and show the two sides. When you put this thing back together, it's just easy to look at the video, taking it apart to make sure you put everything back together the way it's supposed to go. But one of the things that's real tricky is this mechanism here because there's three things moving around. You have to make sure that you get the full throw. And that means that you have to place this not like here because I'll show you what happens. It jams up. You're not going to get the full throw. So you really have to kind of play with it and make sure that you're all the way to the possible end of the cog. And this might be where these devices break because if you look, that little tab is really small. It's bigger here, bigger here. That's a weak link. And once again, Nerf, what are you thinking? This is such an easy fix. Just double the plastic thickness on that. And you've got something that's going to last a lot longer and it's going to work for the people who are buying these because the guns are not cheap. Why not make it that thick over here? Come on, Nerf. You're better than that. 
There you go. So I've pushed it all in. I haven't even put in the screws yet. I just wanted to make sure that mechanism was working. A couple things to point out that I think were interesting is this is the mechanism. Got a little trip gate there. Pretty frail. Here's where the bullet comes out of the magazine. Goes in here like this. I thought that was pretty interesting. I haven't put any of the screws in yet. It's all placed, I believe, correctly. That's all the way to the stop on that one. That's all the way to stop on this one. That's important. Same thing with this mechanism here. Ah, you can see. If I want full throw, I've got to bring it all the way back over here. Now, I have to screw this in here, 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 here. That's the four screws are the only ones I can see. Oh, there's some screws here. Screw here and screw here. The door's on. Works. That was three screws. Here's the other side. It's really good together. You want to make sure that you don't over tighten these screws. They're not designed to be taken apart. You got to be very careful. You got to make sure everything's in place. Don't break that tab off or your gun's going to be broken. Not a big fan of poor engineering. This is all down tight. Put it down in here like this. It's going to work. It's going to work. Well, there it is. It's all together here. A little bit of adjustment. Put these screws in place. And this side of the gun is done, and I'll be able to show the battle-worn side and the just regular painted side. This is the second gun I've done. I did the Han Solo one. I really am pleased with how this turned out. It's fully functional for a Nerf gun. I like this hammered metal finish, but the big star and big surprise was this rub and buff. Rub and buff really does a great job. It makes things look pretty cool. So this is better than the basic gun. But everybody likes the battle-worn version. You can fill these all these holes in with some black putty. I have black heat gun glue. This looks like you could take it out and you've been hunting zombies with it. This looks like you just found it and you're gonna hunt zombies with it. If you like what I'm doing here, please subscribe below so you'll know every time I make a new build. Thumbs up and comments always appreciated. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more builds coming soon. I've got a whole bunch of Star Wars things in prep for May the 4th and they're just around the corner. Or they're already published below. Check them out.